Good morning, you sexy sons of bitches. I am the Rock of the Amber, and we're back. It's Friday, and eBay stuff arrived. I got the filter pods. I got the ignition switch. On the last episode of Joe's Cafe Racing, I don't know if I edited it out, but here's the old ignition switch. Pretty fucked, if you ask me. When we test fired it at Joe's yard, it had spark. It must have gotten jostled on the way here because I didn't literally change anything. And it had no spark when I tried to fire it up here. So I bought new spark plug wire, same diameter. So today we're gonna go ahead and try. I don't know, man. We'll see. So I don't remember if I edited it out of the last video. But I was saying how I, I kind of like the square headlight. A lot of people's first impulse is to go with a round headlight. But I kind of like this. I'm gonna want to make it work i got the stock headlight from the heist it's pretty cool cat eye tail light 50s or uh 40s ford cadillac hot rod tail light like i said universal ignition switch this is pretty cool in from the battery out to start accessory and ignition pretty self-explanatory there's two systems on the bike lighting and ignition the final system that is always permanently connected is the charging system you got the stator under this cover you got some wires that come through here and they go like i said to the regulator and the rectifier easy peasy chicken greasy you know how it is with choppers and cafe racers the more shit you take off the more legit you build gonna be four o'clock <sighs> I got a late start because I couldn't find my wiring kit I ended up stealing Randall's wiring kit and then I found mine um, so we're doing the wiring today ignition ignition switch came in the mail these are really cool they got a couple of keys you can eliminate all the wiring I actually cut off the wiring to the to the thing because um, the headlight switch is actually sees the run and kill uh, dial is broken off the only thing that does work is the start button I might wire it into the system but in all likelihood this is going to be the way to start it ignition power and then start and uh, kills uh, accessories so it'll kill the headlights while you're turning over the motor just for extra power you got the five pins on the back of the switch this one is crank, this one is ignition, this one is accessory, and this one is in from the battery. So you take out to accessory, right here it comes out, and it splits off to the front. The front splits off to the brake light switch, and then it returns from the brake light switch, and then you just got a loose wire here that's gonna go to the headlight. For your high beam, what I like to do is drill a hole through the headlight bucket, install a toggle switch, and split it off so you can feed low beam and high beam and this wire is always powered from the ignition when it's on accessory and this one comes in from the switches right here it splits down and it goes down into the rear brake light switch and then it comes back up again to you see this moving this labeled wire is the brake light wire pretty simple shit <clears throat> So that's the lighting, that's the wiring required for the lighting. As you can see, it's only one, two, three, four wires. Uh, these two wires that are running are actually the same wire. So it's two wires here, or four wires here, and two wires there. That's a total of six wires. That's really all you need for your lighting. Um, this is how my bike is set up, except I don't have a rear brake light switch. We might not end up keeping the rear brake light switch because Joe says he wants a cafe racer and a proper cafe racer. I see guys doing the bolt on clip ons. I see guys spending two or three hundred dollars on a legit cafe racer seat. They dent the knee panels on the tank. But for it to be a true cafe racer, cafe racers are about the ergonomics. Cafe racers have rear sets. So when we move this uh, rear brake lever, uh, we might not be able to keep this um, Of course we can engineer it back in but um, I usually don't I just rock the front brake light switch 
for the ignition, you take power from the battery and take it to the switch, the one that says battery that's on the bottom, and this thing is ignition, so it goes straight from here to the ignition coils. The yellow ones are common, and down here are the points. It grabs chassis ground from the crankcase, and when the crank uh, opens these points, like a saw, the ignition, the ignition coils lose their ground and send the power through the ignition lead. Pretty simple. And then all we need to uh, wire in after that is going to be the starter relay. Most motorcycles, the starter is a uh, chain drive and there's a clutch and the starter is always connected to the crankshaft. But that clutch slips when the engine starts and it grabs when the engine is dead. So there's no solenoid that bumps the pinion gear into the flywheel. It's a one-way clutch, so pretty simple shit. Um, this is the in from the battery. This is out to the ignition switch. This post is out to the starter. And then these two, they are I think they're reversible. But when you feed power to this, you're going to hear it click. You guys hear that clicking? This is an electromagnetic momentary switch. And basically this circuit you're gonna con you're gonna connect it when you're doing this motion easy peasy chicken greasy my bike was a lot more difficult to wire just because it has cdi ignition which is cool because points get dirty condensers fail and this requires a lot of maintenance but for you preppers out there if you know what's up you know you want to get something with points ignition because this is EMP proof. There's no circuitry in here at all. All right, so sorry if this video is ranty and it's not really showing a lot, but I wanna put this video out soon and the sun's a finish set, so. The only thing about this bike that I don't like is the old fashioned charging system. This looks kind of like a modern regulator rectifier, except this is only a rectifier. This is the regulator. This is the variable load. You, this looks more familiar with the three yellow wires, except out of the crankcase, there's a blue, a pink, and a yellow, and a white, and a ground. Uh, so I'm not entirely sure how this goes, but the bulk of the wiring is still back here. It's ugly. Um, these wires are 40 years old, so they're brittle. If one of them flexes, this happens. This happens where when it flexes it breaks because it's so old and brittle and dry so that's kind of shitty i'm gonna have to be really careful open up this bulkhead and find out which wires go where um it's a lot more simple to do this on a <sighs> on a modern bike but them's the brakes it's got its ups and its downs just like everything else in life Ah, Houston, we might have a problem. Pretty sure some of that got on the camera. Move my tools out of the way. Well... Maybe the compression we do have is because of the water <laughs> in the cylinders. <laughs> oh, this is terrible. Anyhow, I'm done for the night. The basic wiring is done. We've got a tail light. We've got a front brake light. We've got a rear brake light. We've got a headlight, and we don't yet have a high-low beam switch. So when we get that, I'm going to throw it on. I'm going to leave the battery on the charger, even though I was told it was a good battery. I charged it overnight last night, and right now it's dead. All right, so it's a few minutes later and a few degrees colder. But we're not going to work on the bike anymore, because Rando just dropped by and hooked me up with the Fallout 4 Game of the Year Edition. With all of the DLCs. So 
Uh, probably not going to be very productive for the next uh, 200 years. So, yeah. It's been nice knowing you. Uh, can somebody come by and feed my dogs? Because I'm going to be locked inside.